We're having an all electric day. We're driving the Arkimoto Fub over to do some e-foiling out in the bay here. But I'm gonna find out today if my wife, who has zero board experience, can learn how to e-foil. Johnny, have you ever e-foiled? No. Wakeboarded? Nope. One-wheeled? Never. Skateboarded or snowboarded? No. Well, my wife has zero board experience, and we're gonna see if she can take one lesson and learn how to fly. Let's find out. We finally made it over to E-Foils Oahu, located in Hawaiian Water Sports. One thing you need to know about my wife is she's actually really coordinated. Beats me in volleyball, tennis, and basketball. I think she's gonna pick up on it. She's gonna have a few falls, which is part of the learning experience. But let's go ahead and meet Josh, owner of E-Foil Oahu. How's it going, Josh? Oh, hey. Who's this girl? So this is Ehukai. She's our shop dog here at Hawaiian Water Sports. Well, yeah, what do you got going on here? We've got, you know, stand-up paddle boards we do when the wind's not blowing. Surfboards, longboards here, windsurfing boards. We've got uh, wing boards, uh, kite surfing, skim boards. What got you into e-foiling? You know, e-foiling is a great foiling sport to, to get started with. So a lot of people want to learn how to surf foil or kite foil or wing foil, but they, it's hard to learn two things at once. So we got into it sort of as a stepping stone to get people to learn how to do it. And, and it's so much fun all on its own that, that for a lot of people, they just buy one and go for it. Lessons are generally about uh, $300. We use the two-way radio helmet so we can talk to our students while they're out on the water. On average, how long do you think it takes someone to learn how to e-foil? First day is kind of more exploratory, try to figure out you know what works and then the next, the next day you really kind of get it down. So a couple hours. Yep, that's exactly how it was for me. I picked it up in about 30 minutes, had a lot of big falls, but the next day it just kind of clicked. So I think that one day digestion really helps out a ton. So Josh starts out the lesson by teaching you how to use the remote. It's one of the most important things to learn how to flight board. Take it slow and kind of get comfortable. I think it's gonna be 90% foot placement on the board. So if you're standing in the right spot, everything's balanced. You're right in the middle of that uh, seesaw or teeter-totter. That's what's gonna find your level and your balance. It's not like snowboarding or surfing where you can be abrupt with your feet. You have to be kind of very subtle with your feet movements, I find. What I end up telling people is to try to shift your balance without using your upper body, just use your knees. If you're gonna wipe out, is there a certain way that you should try to get off the board? <laughs> yeah, so first of all, you should try to get off the board. Okay. Like don't try to land on the board. Okay. You wanna go left or right and try to Think of yourself as Superman, Wonder Woman, flying on your stomach, right? And and pretend that the water is only a foot deep. That way you're not gonna dive down, you're just gonna go on the surface. Okay. Yeah. Cool, well, we'll load up, I'll close up the shop here and head down for the beach. Get a good run uh, on the river runway. So if it wasn't windy today, we'd be flight boarding out here in the ocean. But when it's windy, they say they use the river just because it's a little bit easier to learn. So we're gonna go check out the river here shortly. Well, you can still start on one and get your feet all set. But before you try and fly, go ahead and just kick it to two before you... Johnny just got done with her first lesson. She did amazing. She flew 200 feet, no problems at all. She's flying in speed setting one, which is amazing to me. She kicks my butt in a lot of sports, so I knew she'd pick up on it. She needed someone else besides me. That's the one thing that I find is when it comes to teaching your significant other, a lot of my friends, they get in arguments with their wives trying to teach them how to snowboard. So I figured I put in my secret weapon. You taught her in one hour, so I appreciate the good tips. And you don't have to sleep on the couch. That's perfect. Yeah, see? <laughs> I don't even gotta sleep on the couch this time, so that's awesome. We're back for day two of trying to teach my wife, who has zero board sport experience, how to fly board. Can she do it? Yes, she did the first day. She went 200 feet, but she was having troubles turning. Let's see if she can turn today. thought it was gonna be or harder than you thought it was gonna be? It really does take a lot of skill and like coordination of like right. you're thinking about so many different things at the same time. Then you were like these two are uncoordinated guys can do it so it's got to be easy right? <laughs> and I was so sore after the first day I'm surprised oh, like nice. pulling yourself up and like this leg specifically Uh huh. how sore it was. 
All right, we just got done with day two of Johnny on the E-foil. Super impressed with my wife. She was able to go 200 feet the first day. Today she kicked up the speed setting to speed level two, and it was much better for her to have a little bit more speed so she could initiate turns. She's turning left and right. Some things I felt that she'll get next time is just looking where she wants to go, but for the most part, she did amazing. I couldn't believe how great she was doing. What would you say um, was better this time? Probably just more confidence in getting over, like just the initial worry of getting on the board and falling off you get very comfortable with that after your first day. What would you say are the top three things that helped you learn how to fly today? The first thing I would say is having the helmet with the mic and being able to hear my coach um, as I'm flying because he's able to tell me just step a little bit forward, a little bit backwards. Um, so that's super helpful. The second thing I would say is just the fact that where we were flight boarding was really calm. There wasn't big waves or anything like that. So that really helped. Um, and the third thing I would say is just the fact that I gave it another try. I gave it another go after my first try. So that gave me a lot of confidence to do, um, to do more today and take different risks and start turning um, and not giving up on it. She did better than I did on my first day. Then the second day just kind of clicks. You have some time to digest it, kind of learn from what you did wrong and what you did right. It's much better the second day. So if you're ever thinking about taking a flight school, Think about taking it for a couple lessons and then you'll be a pro by the end of it. You don't have to have any type of board sports to learn how to e-foil. It may look challenging, but if you ever think about getting into e-foiling, you definitely wanna check out a flight school because it makes it way easier. They have mics on their headsets. They have awesome teachers. Thank you, Josh, from eFoil Wahoo. Thanks for tuning in and when you ride, make sure you wear your life vest.